What is up, Ute Nation? This is the North End Zone Ute. And welcome to the first North End Zone Ute fake podcast. What's happening, guys? This is the very first podcast I've ever done. Thanks for listening. Um, of course, we're always going to talk about U- University of Utah football. Maybe maybe we'll add some other things to it. Um, got a lot of things on my chest. I want to talk about a lot of things. Um, University of Utah has recently um, hired a new offensive coordinator and um, has released um, their old. Um, they let go Aaron Roderick. Um, there's lots of, I mean, there's, of course, I listen to a lot of sports radio. I'm a fan. I do this for fans. I'm a fan. I come from a fan perspective. It's kind of how I do things. But kind of listen to the general feel on sports radio. I listen to pretty much all the stations. I listen to a lot of different podcasts. And uh, at least from sports radio, I get a lot of, of feeling that, uh, um, I don't think people are really happy about it. Um, as far as I mean, I think they feel like Aaron Roderick deserved to stay as offensive coordinator. And I can't really disagree with the fact that, you know, the Utes have gone through many offensive coordinators in the recent years, in the last, you know, eight to 10 years. I don't, I haven't wrote down the exact number. I think it's around eight offensive coordinators in eight years. I may be wrong. It's definitely not a a, fan, a plan you'd want want to go say, hey, this is how you do it. Of course, there has been recent success. Um, they've won a lot of games because of the defensive mentality and special teams, and it's kind of part of the blueprint, if you will, is uh, win games with special teams and or defense and special teams, and uh, you know put the offense in good good situations and. It has been successful. Now, the general feel I get from listening to sports radio is there's a, you know, general feel that Kyle Whittingham maybe meddles with offense or is overbearing and almost intimidates his offensive coordinators into, you know, playing very uh, methodical and very conservative. Um, You know, and I... I think, I mean, things have changed a little bit this year with Troy Williams as far as throwing the ball downfield a little bit. Um, his, you know, his short passes have leave leave a little bit to be desired this year. I hope it changes next year. But um, they move the ball in between the 20s. I think that's something they have done well this year is move the ball in between the 20s. And I think something we've heard a lot from Kyle Whittingham is we need to score in the red zone. That was the issue I've heard all year long when talking about issues with offense is not that we can't move the ball. It's it's scoring, you know, touchdowns in the red zone. And I really feel, in my opinion, that's a big, I mean, that's a difference between them, you know, winning, you know, having the record that they had and going to the Rose Bowl. I think if they could have punched the ball in some of those games and scored in the red zone, I think we're looking at a whole different situation here. And I think they had the defense to really back them up. And and so maybe I'm a little homer here, but I think I have a little different take than I hear a little bit on sports radio. Now, I think a lot of these guys, now I like them all, or I wouldn't listen to them, so I'm not going to you know, tell you that these guys suck and their opinions suck. That's not how I feel, but I do have a different opinion. Now, I also feel like you have to take things and you have to understand where people come from. And they, everybody, we all have our own bias. I think that's understood. And these guys, you know, they, you have guys that, you know, played with Aaron Roderick. And they're, I, you, you have to believe, I would believe they would be loyal to Aaron Roderick. Even even though, you know, things change and you're you have different occupations. I think there's still loyalty there. I think there's guys who played for Aaron Roderick. Okay. And I understand that. And there's also people who's interviewed Aaron Roderick. He's been offense or been involved with the youth for, I believe 12 years. And so I think, you know, there's, there's, there's some sort of, I mean, you're not supposed to be friends, right? I mean, if you're just a media now, it may be different for the guys who played for him or played with him. 
but I mean, I think there's a general like, and you have to, you get along and, you know, and I think believe Aaron Roderick's been a lot of, I mean, when these guys have sources, you know, uh, I think Aaron Roderick's a, a main source. I mean, when we hear stories coming out of Utah, I think they get a lot of information from this guy. That's just me speculating, but, and so I think, you know, there, you always have to take that in, in consideration with this. And I think, I don't, I think Aaron Roderick's a good guy from everything I see. I don't know him, obviously, but, you know, I'm not tied to him. I'm not, I don't have a emotional feel if he gets fired. Um, but I, I like him. I think he's done a decent job and, you know, I don't think it would have been realistic to have him, you know, take a step back, especially with someone with less experience than him and, uh, you know, you know, being demoted. I don't think that would have made sense. So I think, you know, for both sides, that would, this is really the best way to go. Now, I'm excited about the new hire. Um, I do feel like, you know, I'm excited to see what Troy Taylor can do with this new offense. I'm not saying, you know, and, you know, there will be growing pains, but, you know, getting back to Aaron Roderick, I think, you know, and and I think he's expressed as much, you know, about red zone issues and not having a power running game and things of that nature. And I, I can understand that to a certain extent, but I think, you know, and I'm just a fan and I get emotional during games, but I think there uh, there was a lack of trying to be, I don't know, creative. I mean, just, I mean, fourth and one. Fourth and one, we could call this whole season fourth and one, right? I believe the first, I don't know if it's six fourth and ones. We, you know, we converted six or seven and we converted Then it seems like, and I haven't, you know, I haven't looked up the numbers, but I believe for the rest of the year, we didn't convert fourth and one, at least from, you know, memory. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's sometimes we have, but it feels like we ran the same play. And I think this is definitely a fan's perspective, right? I think all fans, not, I mean, generally speaking, there's a lot of fans that feel the same way that that same play running the ball up the middle and with nothing, no variations, nothing. The defense knew exactly what to expect and, you know, and run the ball right to the teeth of the defense. And, yeah, if we have a better offensive line, we should be able to push the guys off the ball and we should, you know, be able to convert. But we weren't. And so for whatever reason. Now, I remember the Oregon game where uh, we failed to convert on a fourth and one. And it seems like, I don't know if it was a couple series later, we had a third and two, and we did a play-action pass and uh, threw to the tight end, I believe, and, and converted first down. And I just thought to myself, why the hell didn't we run that play on fourth and one? I mean, there's all sorts of things you can do, and, and that's what I'm talking about, creativity. I, I'm not talking about trick plays. I'm not talking about gadgets. But there are times when you, I don't know, it's it, it just, it's like, like I said, being creative and actually I know creative is not actually the right word. I'm just, you know, have variations and, and they do in situations. I'm not, I'm, I'm, of course I'm just putting the microscope microscope on fourth and one, but there are many other situations where we, I think creativity and a little, um, I don't know, just personnel. That's not the right word, but something, Another thing, another general thing when you listen to sports talk radio is, um, you know, the coaches don't catch the ball. The coaches don't fumble the ball. And I think that's a general thing you hear a lot when they people defend maybe Aaron Roderick. And I, I, again, I mean, there's no perfect answer to any of all this. And I agree to that to a certain extent. But I also believe prep in preparation, you prepare against doing those things. And a lot of times you hear Kyle Whittingham, you know, in defense of his players when he, he says, you know, talks about game plan and things, what reason to losing. See a lot, a lot of times he says it's on us coaches and maybe, maybe it, there's a general thought that that's just co- coach speak. He's just defended his players and that's coach speak. But I think there's a certain, you know, I think there's something to that to a certain extent. And I think that, you know, if you prepare, 
and you have your players prepared and in execution and executing plays and you have that confidence. And I think that's a big thing, preparing and having confidence that you have prepared. Now, it's not going to eliminate all of it, but I think it will help. And I think maybe that's something they missed in some of those you know, situations. I think all, Guy Holiday was a good addition. I think there was improvement in the passing game. But again, it gets back to the red zone. And that's where, really, I think we had a general improvement in offense this year in certain situations. Um, I think, but where we missed out is in the red zone. Now, one you know, one thing different between Travis Wilson and Troy Williams is Travis Wilson was a, Travis Wilson was a powerful runner, you know, and man, that's something we missed this year. Now we got things from, you know from Troy Williams that we didn't get from Travis Wilson, right? But there were also things when, you know, with the re- <clears throat> zone read that we just couldn't do when we had Travis Wilson. And, man, all this, you know, all this fans that maybe complain a little bit about Travis Wilson are, we, we got to admit, that's something we miss this year. Now, I think Troy Williams had a little more touch on the ball, and he, he you know, passed the ball wetter, but, you know, but I think there, there, there could be ways for an off, off, offensive coordinators to see the talent we have and apply it to what we had. And there's still ways to run the ball in the end zone. I mean, Joe, Joe Williams ran the ball in the end zone this in this year. There's, there's ways to get him the ball. But I think there were some strange play calls in the red zone. And, uh, and you know, that's just my opinion. That's how I feel. You know, I am a homer. And I'm definitely a Kyle Whittingham fan. Now, do I always agree with Kyle Whittingham? No. Does he know a lot more than I do? Yes. But I'm a fan, and, you know, that's part of, I don't know, in my opinion, that's part of it. You get emotional, and you get excited, and, you know, you scream out <laughs> things that maybe, if you rationally think about it, that maybe you shouldn't have said. But I'm a big fan of Kyle Whittingham, and I'm, I'm on board with this Troy Taylor hire. I really am. I'm excited about it, and I hope that, you know, we can implement this quickly, and I think it's going to take time. I think there's going to be some growing pains, but I'm excited. I'm, I'd like to have another podcast, you know, you know, diving into Troy Taylor and maybe looking at the positives and maybe what we can do you know, and how this offense can, you know, achieve good things. Um, you know, again, I'd like to, you know, wish Aaron Roderick the best. I think he's a good guy. He was a good coach. And a good person. And, you know, you never just want to see anybody lose their job. I, I don't want to ever celebrate somebody losing their job. But, uh, you know, sometimes change can just, you know, sometimes you don't ever want to change for the sake of change. But sometimes it can change an environment. It can breed excitement. And maybe there's something. And maybe it'll help recruiting a little bit. I don't know. Um, but I, I I hope we can have a different angle on, on the offense this year or as far as you know, getting a little more out of the offense, scoring in the red zone, you know, keep the things we've improved on, although the offense is going to be different, so obviously that doesn't. <laughs> but I'm feeling excited right now about the change. Um, I'm feeling good about it, and I think there's good things to come. I'm very hopeful there's good things to come. And uh, thanks for listening to my first podcast. Uh, I know it's a little shaky here. I knew this thing, but it's a lot of fun. I'd rather much do this podcast and, you know, record my video, record myself. I don't have a really problem being on <laughs> video record myself, but it's not really, that's not my purpose for doing this. I just want to get my thoughts out and opinions out. And, you know, Hey, I think it's, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. Um, again, this is the North end zone. Ute, and this is number one North end zone. you fake podcast. Thanks for listening. Um, have a good time, guys, and go Utes. Oh, yeah. This new season is going to be 